you know, I got married Halloween, I had a demonic wedding. Why would you put your kids, your family, why would you put your purpose, your destiny, why would you put your whole eternity in a demonic altar? So a lot of Christians, um, they think there's nothing wrong with, you know, celebrating Halloween and all this stuff. You being in, you know, in Satanism and God delivering you from that. What are your thoughts on that? October 31st is like the ultimate day. Um, it, it's like Christians, Easter and Christmas all rolled in together. People should not participate in any way, shape or form because you are worshiping the devil. Halloween is celebrated in over 20 countries every year on October the 31st. Although many believe it started as a Catholic holiday known as Hallow's Eve, the night before All Souls Day, the truth is Halloween emerged from a Celtic festival called Samhain in Ireland. According to the Druid tradition there, this was an evil night when spirits of all who died the previous year would roam the streets. While Lord Samhain, the Lord of Darkness, would arrive in search of these spirits to take them out to the underworld. Druids even believed Samhain sent evil spirits abroad to track humans who could only escape by assuming disguises that looked like evil spirits. Hence why people dress up and have all these masks and disguises. So it's no wonder many modern traditions of Halloween, like wearing scary costumes and ghoulish masks, lighting candles, bonfires, trick or treat, playing pranks, and even bat spotting, all have their roots in Samhain, the festival of the dead. Happy Halloween! But it doesn't stop there. It turns out that Thousands of witches and Wiccans and wizards and druids and pagans and Satanists all across the world, they love Halloween, observing it as some sacred time of Samhain, a time when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. And we call on the powers of the old ones the spirits of the dead. We draw them here tonight. Each and every one of you has someone you have lost. I want you to think of them in your mind's eye and draw them here. Now, despite all of this, most Christians in America will happily celebrate Halloween on October the 31st. In fact, according to a survey from Lifeway Research, only 8% of pastors, Todd, will want their congregations to skip the holiday altogether. And you might find that shocking as a pastor yourself. While two thirds encourage church members to participate in Halloween type events. Um, some American Christians participate in the part of Halloween where kids and some adults uh, dress up uh, for fun and for free candy. Now there's no spiritual harm in dressing up as a princess or an angel or a superhero and entertaining your neighbors and eating free candy and drinking cider and all of that kind of stuff. So Todd, the question I want to ask you is, what does God think of Halloween? Well, there are a couple of pointers in Scripture where God would uh, warn us against any kind of uh, desire to interact with the spirit world, which seems to me that that's part of the very heartbeat of Halloween. So God warns us against uh, seeking to uh, contact spirits or uh, necromancers, witches, uh, all of those sorts of things are strictly forbidden yeah. in Scripture because there is a separation between uh, life and death between good and evil and one of the most problematic aspects that I see of Halloween is it, it blends the two. It, yeah. it is the one day of the year in which we find uh, permission to sort of embrace what's evil and celebrate what's good rather than keeping ourselves as far away from evil as we can. And so it, it becomes very problematic. Um, but God's Word says, do not seek evil, do not make contact with the dead. All of That's these right. things are, are strictly forbidden. I think the uh, 
the notion that you said that this is the one point in time which the veil is sort of the thinnest between yeah. uh, the two realms of, of life and death. This is where death is sort of embraced. We celebrate death, which is sort of contrary to human nature. Why would we celebrate death? Life is the way we were created to enjoy. And so God wants life for us, not death. And so I think God, God does not want us to embrace death. And this is a little aspect of that. That's right, and it's become part of the culture, and Christians simply follow the culture without thinking about the spiritual dimension behind this. Right. I think that's one of the greatest issues, too, is that we don't know the history behind the celebration. Uh, we think it's just an innocent little holiday to dress up and play games yeah. um, when that's not the history. And there is a connection spiritually to events that we live out in our lives uh, in, in the spiritual realm. And we're sometimes very unaware of those connections. And so God is telling us to maintain a separation between those two, uh, what is good and what is evil. In other words, setting aside any day to entertain pagan rituals, evil, fear, darkness, death, and the demonic is an abomination to God, period. Jesus has nothing in common with Satan, and neither should we. So I'm just going to share two scriptures, Todd. It says in Ephesians 5.11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And here's another scripture. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. This was said to the children of Israel when they went to take the promised land right. in Canaan. And there were pagans living in that land. And God said to them, you will not associate with anyone who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer, that's a fortune teller, or one who interprets omens or sorcerer, or one who conjures spells. These are the things that they do, witches and warlocks and wickers right. do on Halloween. Uh, or anyone who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. That's the scripture. So Todd, what I want to ask you is, what are the sort of consequences or implications from the Bible when people do practice those sort of things which happen on Halloween? Well, the, the greatest and most fearful aspect of that is that you're, you're entertaining a connection with demons and, and the darkest realms of, of Satan. Right. And so uh, you open yourself up to satanic influence. You open yourself up to the influence of demons and spirits. And so any number of consequences could come, which would be very harmful, even physically, spiritually. And sometimes, you know, Paul talks about people who have worshipped idols not knowing that they're actually worshiping demons. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to worship demons, right? We're, we're yeah. bringing ourselves under the judgment of God if we're worshiping demons. And so we need to stay away as far as possible from anything that we even hint of, of any kind of evil or demonic realm, because we don't want to make a connection or leave an open door for Satan to have a foothold in our lives. As we've seen, Halloween is not some harmless celebration. And whether you are a Christian or not, stay clear of participating in anything that will bring you or your children under a curse. But if you've taken part in Halloween in the past, and I mean most of us all have at some point, there is a way to be free. The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be delivered. And if you ask Jesus to forgive you, he will. So why don't you take the time to do that right now? Just find a quiet place, call upon Jesus from your heart and he will answer. And if that's you, Todd and I would like to pray for you right now while you're watching. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the viewers who are watching right now. And we ask right now that by your spirit, they be released from every demonic oppression, from their participation in Halloween or any other occultic practice. We rebuke those evil spirits right now and command you in the name of Jesus to free the people watching right now who are coming and turning to Jesus. We renounce Satan. We say against him that he has no foothold in our lives. So Jesus, we look to you 
We invite you to come and be the Lord of our lives, to govern uh, over every aspect of our health and our family, and we pray that you would be the Lord who would reign supreme. We acknowledge your Lordship and we denounce any, any foothold or any realm that Satan would have, have stepped into in our lives. We do this in the name of Jesus because in your name all people will have freedom and uh, es escape from any kind of bondage. So Jesus, it's in your name we trust, knowing that all things are possible. Amen. Amen. So if you just prayed with us, please leave a comment. We would love to hear what you have to say because we want to keep you in prayer. So let us know. Don't forget to turn on those notifications and hit the subscribe button.